Today we're gonna to be unboxing the iCube 5 watt laser. Well, that's the unboxing because there's not much to it. I'm gonna put it through its paces and tell you what I do and don't like about it. Hi everyone, I'm Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations. We tackle everything DIY and Skolfin have kindly sent over their latest offering which is the iCube. This is the 5 watt version but there's also a 3 watt and a 10 watt and this might just be a game changer for many. Let's roll the intro and get into it. Today we're going to be covering the iCube's features, who I think this laser is designed for. We'll also answer the question, can this laser be a standalone machine? We'll of course look at its pros and cons and its performance, and at the end I'll share my final thoughts. But let's start by having a look at its features. The first and what might be my favourite, and I think this feature could be a game changer, is just how light and portable the iCube is. The second feature might not be a feature of the iCube, but I think it should be still counted because it is so portable and compact, you can actually power the iCube off a portable power station just like this EcoFlow Delta. There are some caveats which we'll get into at the pros and cons, but a really cool feature. A great feature of the iCube and one that I think has been a long time coming is you can now control the iCube with just your mobile phone. You don't have to use a light burn. There are some drawbacks with using just the app which we'll go through in the setup. But I love that as a beginner you can get this out of the box in under five minutes, be connected to your phone and already engraving. The engrave area is 130 mil by 130 mil and you can engrave straight on top of this plate here or you can remove the plate and you have an opening so that you can sit the laser on top of wherever you would like to engrave. Another feature of the laser is the sheer speed that this machine can engrave at. You can get up to speeds of 10,000 millimeters per minute, which I think at the time of recording is the fastest any of the lasers in the Sculfin range can go and the detail that you get at that speed is phenomenal. The last feature I want to highlight before we get into the action is that the laser comes with a two-stage filtering system and fan placed here at the back. They also throw in some replacements in the box, which is nice. And because you have this protective shield around here, it's a really cool feature if you're working in a small or enclosed space. I think the laser is designed for three different kinds of humans. The first kind of human is the person that is selling face to face, somewhere like a market. The second kind of human is the person that has a limited workspace. And the third kind of human is someone that already has a large laser, but they are looking for a dedicated engraver. Now the last two humans are fairly self-explanatory. So I wanna take a second to narrow in on the first human, the person that's looking to sell at a market. I've been the one selling at markets and in my opinion, a customer is looking for things that they can't find in a retail store and they love stuff that is personalized. And for that reason, I think the iCube is the perfect market store companion. It's portable and compact and the fact that it can run off a portable power station and just your mobile phone is a game changer. As market store holders, we face a couple of challenges. One of them is how do you get a customer to stop at your stall? This is a customer stopper. There is no way that a customer is gonna be able to walk past, see this laser in action and not stop to see A, what it's doing and B, what you've got for sale. And now the challenge that we face is we're not quite sure what we're going to sell. We may end up making a bunch of things that don't sell and not enough of the stuff that is selling. This allows you to create on the fly. You could have something like these notebooks with a couple of designs or even the coasters half designed and then they just need to be personalized and you can create on the fly right here and the customer can watch their design come to life, which they're absolutely going to love. So if you are someone that is selling face-to-face -face or at a market, I think you could pick up an iCube and make your money back in the first market. Just something to consider if that is how you're selling your products. When I'm preparing to do a laser review, before I even open the box, I sit down and think about what questions do I have about that particular machine. And for this one, I kept coming back to really one question. Can it be a standalone machine? And the short answer is yes, but it's really only designed to engrave. Every laser company out there, Skolfin included, will tell you that any laser at any watts can cut through material. And the short answer is sure, yeah, it can do that, but I don't think that's what it's designed to do. My belief is 10 watts and under really is designed for engraving. The laser beam is so fine and you get such a great engrave and that's what it's meant to do. Particularly this machine, being able to engrave at 10,000 millimeters per minute means that it's meant to engrave and it's meant to engrave quickly. So if you're someone out there that is in a workshop that's looking to brand whatever they're making, 
or just to engrave blanks that you can buy online, this might just be the perfect machine for you. For me personally, in this workshop, I'm better off with a larger machine that can do both, but if I was still out there selling at markets and face-to-face, -face, I would be getting one of these in a heartbeat. But yes, it can be a standalone machine if you're looking to engrave only, in my opinion. The moment of the video you've all been waiting for, how does the laser perform? Well, overall, the performance of the laser is excellent. The quality of the engraves at 10,000 millimeters per minute and a five watt laser is phenomenal. I am really happy with how the engraves have come out. Just like all diode machines, you can engrave on all of the same materials. So you've got everything from plywood, hardwood, cork, 100% leather, silicon, and so much more. My favorite material has got to be cork. The darkness of the engrave and the quality of the engrave on the cork it's my favorite material to engrave on. I absolutely love it. I also did these wine and snack holders, which I really like, and you can easily personalize them. That's a great one to be using on the app to quickly personalize it, and away you go. I love the notebooks that you can have blanks, and then you could have a couple of different designs, and the customer would be able to choose what they want to have on it. And we've even done a plate that I picked up at Kmart so that I can display my Christmas cookies at Christmas time. But overall, I'm really happy with how the laser has performed. But before you decide, whether or not this machine is the right one for you, let's go and have a look at the pros and cons. For the pros and cons, I'm gonna really skip the pros because this whole video, you've been able to see all the things that I love about the iCube. And I think if you're looking to purchase a product, you really wanna know what people don't like about it to help make up your mind. So let's skip the pros and let's head over to the cons. The first con has to do with construction. It is a little flimsy and at first I was concerned. I actually ended up taking the top cover off because I wanted to know is the laser sturdy and it's just the outside covering or is the whole thing really flimsy? The laser itself is sturdy, it's not really going anywhere. It's just the outside cover, which is not the end of the world, but when you wanna go and put on your cover here so that you can set the laser going, you have to be careful and lift up the front to get it to seat all the way in. And if you've just aligned your project to be in the very perfect position, there's every chance if you're not careful as you're doing that action, you're going to knock it and misalign your project. I know why they do it, it's so that you can fit bigger things in here, but I think they need to change the construction up here just to add some support so that this is sitting in the right position and you can seat that protection cover all the way in really easily. It's not the end of the world, like I said, it doesn't affect any of the actions. It can still be moved around, it's not an issue, but I just wish it didn't look so flimsy from the outside. You've heard me talk in this video just how portable and compact the laser is and the fact that it can run off a portable power station. But one of the drawbacks is you are going to have to manage your power. Throughout my testing, I had the IQ running for four hours nonstop with the EcoFlow Delta without any issues. But if you are going to be using a laptop and then powering the laptop also off the portable power station, you're going to have to manage what's plugged in when and what the draw is. Not because it can't be used at the same time, but you don't want to run the EcoFlow down trying to charge your laptop and then not be able to use the iCube. So depending on how long you're going to be out at market or how long you need to be powering for, you may find that this is not big enough and you have to go slightly bigger. Still a great investment because you can use this throughout your home with power outages and a whole bunch of other places and I reckon you'd make your money back pretty quick. The second con has to do with the laser head itself. To adjust it to the right height, you just flick down this bar on the side, you undo the grub screw at the back, have it sit down on your material, tighten back up that grub screw, and then the height adjuster flicks away, which I really like because everything's kept nice and neat. You're not carrying around a separate part, and it works really well if you are engraving straight on top of the plate like this. But the minute you wanna take this plate away and use the laser either sitting on top of something and you're using this hollow section, or you've cut out a template that perfectly fits in here for whatever you're batching out. You then need to move the laser considerably further down and you start to lose support for the laser head. Now in saying this, I have had no issues through my testing and I've done having it sitting on stuff or just using it as a template and it didn't cause any issues, but I would really like to see this bracket at the back here, just extend it down just that little bit further so that the laser head has a little bit more support. I did also have to take the top off and undo a cable tie at the top that was holding the laser head because I actually couldn't get it down far enough to start with. And it's because the laser head cable was connected to something else and I just had to undo that clip so that I could move it further down. So it's worked well throughout the whole thing, but I would just like to see a little bit more support behind the laser head. 
The third con has to do with aligning your projects and this center cutout. In my brain, the center of this cutout should be the center of your work area but that is not the case. And I found that out because when I was doing the cork coasters, I cut out a template that fits perfectly in this area on my bigger machine. And then I cut out where the coasters can sit perfectly in the center, thinking it would be the center of the work area. I quickly worked out that was not the case. And I then had to work out where the center was in my light burn program and make that the center, which was off center, which is very confusing to work out how to properly align all of the projects. The other thing is when you're in the app, you can only align from this corner, which is great unless you have something that you wanna be over here. You then have to work out where it's positioned. You have to move the laser around. It can be a little bit annoying to get the alignment just right. It would make far more sense if the center of this cutout was the center of your work area because aligning projects then would be a breeze. And I think the app has got a little bit of ways to go. I love it. It's beginner friendly, it works but there are some tweaks that could be done in relation to alignment and framing that would make life a whole lot easier when it is in operation. That is my last con. Now onto my final thoughts and hopefully by now you can make up your mind on whether or not this machine is the right one for you. Let me quickly show you how you can connect your mobile device to your iCube. The iCube needs to be powered on and you need to download the Sculfin app onto your mobile phone. And once you've done that, you can go into your Wi-Fi settings and the iCube should show up. You can select that and it'll ask you to enter in a password which you'll find in your documentation. And then you can jump back over to the Sculfin app and you'll need to update the IP address. Once again, that's in your documentation. And then you should be connected. From there, you can jump into the creation section and start to bring your design to life. Now, the app is very limited. It makes it beginner friendly, but it is limited and there are some drawbacks. One of them is if you wanna create your font right there in the app, you only get one font style, you can't change it. The other thing is if you're familiar with using Lightburn, then you're going to be familiar with vectors and SVGs. They're not gonna work in the app because at least with the iPhone, it's accessing the Photos app. And as far as I know, Photos app can't see SVGs. It'll need to be a PNG or a a JPEG. You can easily convert them and then you'll be able to upload. The other thing is if you do upload and it has a transparent background, you don't want your design to be black because for whatever reason, when you go to import it, the screen goes black and then you can't see it and you need to move the grid around where your design is and you're not going to be able to see it. You still want it to be a dark color, but just not black so that you'll be able to see it. So you might be better off designing something in Canva or something similar and then importing it over to the app to get it to run. Once you're happy with your design, you can then select next. And in the next screen, you can change the size that you want your design to be and also what speed and power settings you want. Like Lightburn, it's a little bit different with the power. It runs from zero to a thousand. So you'll just need to run some testing to make sure you've got the sweet spot for the material that you're engraving on. And once you're happy with those, you can then hit upload. It'll ask you to confirm and set the laser going and then you're all done. You can close the app. You can use your phone as normal. It doesn't need to be right there at the laser. If you're at a market store, you can keep taking payments for those sales that you're making and then the laser will do its thing. It is really helpful. It is limited. I think my preference is still to use Lightburn, but it is really beginner friendly and it's a great way to get up and running. Overall, I'm a big fan of the Sculfin iCube. Depending on your use case scenario, this might just be the perfect standalone machine or the best friend to the machine that you already own. If you are looking to purchase one, you can check out the affiliate links that are linked down in the description box below. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Sculfin for their continued support. And I hope you have found this video helpful. If you are looking to purchase one, I hope you found all the information that you need right inside this video. And if I have helped you out, you can help me out by hitting the subscribe and like buttons or check out the video that's about to pop up on your screen. And I'll see you on the next one.